Hello and welcome. Uh, so I want to talk about um, really there's a way that this piece is um, oh welcome welcome sorry I'll start again in a minute but welcome to those of you who are joining um, I, I usually say this but I'll say it again of course anyone who's watching live please feel free to bring any questions any comments any shares from your own life um, if you're watching the replay I also I love your questions I love your shares um, I love you know any pieces you're bringing from your life it helps if you give a little more context when you're watching the replay because I'm not here seeing like knowing what I'm saying as you're typing it <laughs> but I will come back and um, come back into the comments so I love all the questions I love all the shares I love comments about your you know your real lived experience of any of this or um, looking at how does this apply to your real lived experience so Again, welcome. It's beautiful to see your names and faces popping up. And um, and I'll, I'll say, honestly, I'll just say right out of the gate, like I have a very hard time corralling my thought process. <laughs> I have a lot of, you know, sort of thoughts and feelings. And, um, and right now I'm going to take this idea um, or really my own lived experience in in my life and in working with many many men women couples um, in relationship around how important it is to have choice in relationship and I'm gonna corral it a little bit into this idea of the no man diet um, and I'm sure that I'll talk about the way that it applies you know in a bigger way if you're in a relationship if you're not going to leave your relationship if you're you know if you're a man those things are still totally important and um the registration opens tomorrow for next year's no man diet so i'm wanting to share about it in that way to give women who are um, contemplating, who are on the fence, who are, you know, I hear from a lot of women like, oh, I've been looking at this and I've been going back and forth and I wonder if this is for me. And so I wanna give a little more information about why. So I'm corralling like this like huge topic, which applies to all humans <laughs> into a little bit more of a narrow vein. And, uh, and I'm not always great at that, so, so here goes. Um, I think what I want to say right off the bat is, you know, there's a way that that I think most of us would agree would be like, oh, yeah, like it's important to have choice in relationship. Um, and most of us or many of us at least know or would agree, even not just in relationship, but it's a it's a more of like a, a cultural belief at this point, at least within kind of the personal growth, self-help realms that you know our yes is only as good as our no and so this idea that oh i can if i if i can't say no to something then i can't really say yes to it or um if i can't choose not this or if i can't if i don't have choice around what this is then it's not really a true choice and most of us know this in the abstract and we have sometimes a felt experience and um sometimes in one area of our life, but not other areas. And so one of the questions I get a lot about the no man diet that I think relates to this has to do with, well, can't I just heal? Like, can't I make this work within the relationship? You know, it'll be something like a generic question, you know, kind of amalgamation of this would be, you know, I'm a woman, I've been in this relationship, um, and it's kind of working in these ways, it's not working in these ways, and I don't know what to do, and I'm, you know, like, we've been on again, off again, um, you know, can't seem to leave him, but I'm not sure I want to stay, and, and like, but can't I, can't we just work it out together? And my answer is, of course you can. 
you know, like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a choice girl. So, you know, I'm never going to say, no, it has to look like this. Like there's always going to be choice. So of course it's possible to work things out within the container relationship. And, um, you know, and, and obviously in many circumstances, that's a, that's a really important choice to make. If you have a family, if you've been together for a long time, you know, you don't want to just like bail on a whim. However, I, I do see, and I had this experience in my relationship as well, that had sort of an on again, off again, sort of in, sort of out quality, that there was something really important about going like, okay, actually, we're going to say I'm out for this period of time, and I'm going to truly do that. Like, I'm not anywhere in the middle. I'm not sort of in, sort of out. I'm not sometimes in, sometimes out. I'm not waffling back and forth, you know, every 10 days. I'm not saying I'm out, but then when he calls me, I'm like, he loves me, and I'm back. And I'm just truly like, I, I love you. You know, there's so much good here. And, like, and clearly this is the dynamic that we are stuck in and that I can only imagine I have some – part in creating and you know the no man diet and all personal growth work <laughs> really isn't for you if you're only there to point the finger outside of yourself um, I mean I think I say this like straight up on the sales page for the no man diet I'm like this is not for you if you think you know he the, the, gen, the general he or the specific he if you think he is the problem now he might be part of the problem and the work is here the work is here and this is a little tangent from what I was saying but I had the direct experience and I have seen it over and over and over again that when one person takes responsibility not fault not blame but goes like okay I'm gonna take responsibility for shifting this dynamic the dynamic shifts so I did that in my relationship literally like changed my relationship from the inside out. And one of the ways I did that was the no man diet because again, this put this piece about choice was that there was a way in watching myself go in and out and halfway there and back and forth and, you know, on again, off again for a couple of years. Um, it was like, Oh, I, I don't have full choice here. Like I'm scared to leave completely. And, and that means I don't have full choice here. So, okay, I'm going to draw this, you know, boundary such as it is this kind of container of giving myself. Mine was six months. The program is three. Um, the program that I teach and I'll link to that in the comments. Um, you know, this, this period of time to go like for this period of time, this is what our relationship looks like. And it's not sexual. It's not romantic and we're not dating and there is no in and out because this is the form of it and to really claim it. And, and that then ultimately, so this is this, this comes from this question, right? Like, well, do, do I really have to leave my relationship? And the answer of course is no, you don't necessarily have to. And there can be a lot of power in choosing. This is right. This is about choice. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Excuse, <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> it's a problem with lives. Um, can't edit that out. So to truly choose something. And uh, actually, I saw Melinda Lewis. I don't know if she's still on here, but Mark Michael Lewis um, one of the things that he said that I heard, you know, now probably 10 or 15 years ago that really, really landed for me and I have never forgotten it was we make agreements in times of clarity so that we don't have to think about that in times of lack of clarity. And that's kind of, you know, choosing something like three month, no man diet. And I, I actually, there's a, a group of about 10 women who signed up for early registration. And I walked them through a process on our bonus call the other day that was really around getting in touch with the deeper part of them that chose this. And then finding a way to honor and trust that part, that there was some part of them that said, 
okay, a, a deeper, wiser, you know, part of me is making a choice in a time of clarity so that when I get that, you know, 10 p.m. booty call, I've already made my decision. And now I'm not going like, should I, shouldn't I? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like I've literally, I've made it and I've made it for a certain period of time. It's not forever. It's not, you know, it's just like I made that. And that's a, that's a clear choice. And that create that actually in this odd way, or it's not odd, it's just counterintuitive. In a counterintuitive way, there's something about like li almost limiting our choices that actually creates more freedom. I'm no longer now trapped inside my own, you know, internal conflict of like, should I respond? Should I not respond? Should I sleep with him? Should I not sleep with him? Are we in? Are we out? It's just like, oh, actually I'm free because I already made that decision and I know and I know what that decision is. And even if right now I don't totally know why, I actually trust the me that made that decision. And like a totally different kind of example, like not a relational example, for me was when I chose to go to the monastery. And um, practice period actually is three months long also. And, um, you know, we wake up very early in the morning and we follow very clear uh, schedule and structure and, you know, it's all laid out. And when you sign up, they say like, okay, are you sure? This is what it's going to look like. This is what is required of you. There, there, there is no waffling here. You're in or you're out. You know, and they really check, like, are you really in? And then the first thing that you do <laughs> when you go to the monastery is you have to sit for five days. And it's basically another way of saying, like, okay, you're making this decision. Morning, and it was like, wake up, wake up, that I didn't have to be caught in am I going to go to meditate or am I not going to go to meditate? Like I already made the decision that I was going to go, even if I didn't want to go. And that's what the decision to be there was. So making the decision to be on a no man diet is like that sort of like, okay, I'm in a moment of clarity. I'm in a moment of my own inner strength. I know that this is true and right and good for me. And then that actually becomes freedom. That actually becomes freedom to not then have to decide in every moment, am I in or am I out? Like I know what my parameters are. And we actually spend, you know, the women who have already joined, we're spending this full month really creating their container. And it's unique for every woman. Um, in another share I shared about, I had a woman in the last no man diet program who dates women. So it wasn't a no man diet. It was like a no partner diet. It was incredibly transformational for her. Um, and honestly, I've had women join who are in this in between. And I've even said to them, it's not even about you must choose out of your relationship right now, but you have to choose one or the other so that you have a clear container for this time. You either need to be fully in this relationship and I will walk you through that. <laughs> and I guarantee that will be the fucking fire just as much as choosing fully out, but you have to choose one or the other. When you create a container, it is only as powerful as the clarity and the strength of the container that you create. And so we do that. We spend a whole, you know, um, and then registration will open tomorrow and the program will actually begin January 13th. And every woman who's in the program will spend a good week or two. And, and sometimes it evolves over the course of, you know, a month or two even. But a, a good period of time to go like, okay, this is the clarity of the structure of my unique no man diet. And each woman claims that for herself. So it's not a one size fits all. Like I just slap something on it and say, here are the rules, follow them. You know, like this is a unique process. And this is truly what makes it like a deep, deep journey into your own soul would be easier for some of us actually, right? Like if I just came in and said, these are the rules now, follow them. Cause you could be like, man, well, Kendra said, and she doesn't know, you know, or like I'm going to rebel against her or um, not really do the deep inner work that it takes to come to one's own true container, set of agreements to yourself. So the other piece around this idea is like, I just, I really believe that real relationship is built on choice. And that means, and this is not just true in intimate relationship, you know, this is true in friendships, this is even true in family relationships. Like we have to get to the point where we can actually say, I get to choose whether I'm in contact with this person or not, even though I was born into their family. 
Um, but I'm going to talk about intimate relationships right now. So true, like real relationship must be built on true choice. And what that means is that I'm neither dependent, like I cannot exist without you, or like the feeling. Of course, we all know intellectually, like I'll live, you know, without this person. But many of us have the felt, the lived experience of like, I can't live without this person. Or if I'm alone, I'll die. Or... Um, some feeling of, of like desperation, you know, we call it codependence kind of culturally, like pop culture psychology now, but that feeling of like, no, I'm dependent in a way in which I cannot be with what it is to be without them. And I would say that you can't build a real relationship on that. However, this is also like a real relationship, real choice also means not not that. So there's this other thing. And I see this more, I think, in women, although it may be because I work more with women than with men in this way. But I see a lot of like, I don't need a man. I don't need a partner. Like, I'm totally fine on my own. And it's a little bit like I also, um, there's a flavor inside that of I can't need to need someone or want someone. and. I would say that that's not all, that's also not true choice. If I can't also um, be with the part of me that wants a partner or that longs for a relationship, if I can't also have that, then I don't have true choice because the only, like the only choice I've boxed myself into is like, I have to be okay on my own. It's like, oh, what if, what if it's heartbreaking to be on my own, but also I can be inside the heartbreak? And I was looking through the outtake forms from the last No Man Diet, and um, one of the women wrote, and there was a question that had to do with, like, what are your top three takeaways? And she had, two, there were two, and these are these things that I see women against struggle with as though they're opposing each other. And this is what I, I believe they're not opposing each other. And I also believe this is one of the huge benefits of doing a no man diet and especially doing a no man diet in a community and a held container in this way is that one of her top takeaways was that she really came to know her own strength. And one of her other top, top takeaway, takeaways, <laughs> takeaways um, was that her longing was not wrong. And I, I actually believe that these go together, but they're sort of like in the larger cultural context, we've come to unconsciously believe that either I can long for partnership or I'm a strong independent woman. And I just, I think there, I think you can have both. Like you can know, oh, this is the absolute like solidity of my own strength. This is, and this is my true power and that includes my longing. That includes the ache of wanting to be met. That includes all the parts of me that want a relationship or a partner or a man or you know, wish someone would take care of me in this moment. Like That is all included. And then I don't have to remove that part in order to be a strong, independent woman. And, um, and I believe that that is where our true choice in order to be able to enter relationship or engage in true relationship comes from. The other way that I experienced this that really came from my own no man diet was that um, it gave me this place where I could choose to be with my partner or not be with my, now he's my current partner, but we fully separated during that time. And, and it was because it was okay for me to want him and to, and I was okay without him. It was like, I could be both. I could be wide enough and big enough to hold both. And that allowed that when the time came, we could actually, um, I mean, it came from his side too, but I'll just speak from my own experience, which is that it came from me being able to be like, oh, all of that can be true in me, and now I can make a true choice. 
Um, Melinda said, both the idea of your yes is only as good as your no and make commitments in times of clarity so you don't have to make choices in times of confusion, give each partner a wide berth of trust. Trust that we will independently take care of ourselves. Yes. And I think there is, you know, there's this, um, again, it's not an either or in relationship. I really believe and all the work that I do around relationship holds that both our independence and our interdependence hold true at the same time. And actually we can only be interdependent if we're willing to also have a certain independence. So it's beautifully said, Melinda. Um, and that, you know, I mean, that's where uh, really the strength of women choosing to take this kind of time, like this is not a journey for the faint of heart. I think sometimes like the, the title of it, the no man diet, you know, it sounds sort of catchy and light and like, we're just like going on a three month no man diet. And it is, it is a journey into your soul. And that is because it points to exactly what Melinda said there, which is that it points us back to me with me. What is my relationship to myself? Because that relationship that you have to yourself and your own capacity to be with your own wants, your own needs, your own feelings, your own desires, your own experience, your own grief, your own all, like for you to be with who you are and the fullness of who you are as a woman, your own capacity to be with that is, has a direct relationship to your capacity to be in a relationship and a direct relationship to the kind of person that you can be in relationship with. Because so often this piece that's around like, I don't know how to be with this part of me, so how about you be with it? Like, I'm gonna try to like, how about you make this part of me okay because I'm afraid it's not okay. So would you tell me it's okay? That what we're doing is we're, sort of unconsciously trying to hook someone into this pattern of where we're saying like, this part is not okay, this part is not okay, I don't like it, I don't know how to be with it, but you should. You should know how to be with this part and you should accept all parts of me, but I don't. And the no man diet is truly this place where we go like, oh, how do we gather all the parts? And one by one, it's not like saying like, I want to act this out in this particular neurotic way, but it is a gathering and saying, actually, all these parts of me are, are me, and I can say yes to all of them without rejecting any part of me, and actually find the, for lack of a better word, I'll say find the internal strength to be with all the parts of me so that I am no longer putting it like basically going like, uh, these are all the parts I can't be with. So would you be with them? Cause somebody should be with them and accept them. And I can't, it's like, Oh, I actually know how to be with them. And then that invites someone who goes like, wow, you like, you can be with all the parts of yourself. Well, I bet I can too. Like that's the kind of partner we want to have. So we have to actually, uh, in an odd way, it's like model that kind of partnership with ourselves so that another person even knows what to step into in that realm. The other thing that I've seen come up time and time again, and I'll just say here, because we're kind of like the midway point, is just a reminder that I'm talking a lot about women, I'm specifically talking about the no man diet. Um, certainly if you're a man watching, feel free to pass this on to any women in your life you think it's helpful, but also you can do the translation. Like everything I'm talking about relates to men. Everything I'm talking about, you know, relates to uh, men who want to date men, women who want to date women. Like uh, this all relates to all the people and all the relationships. Um, but what I see a lot is women who, and this is one of the areas where the no man diet was really helpful is women who come in going like, I just want, I want a partner so much and um, like explicitly and even I think consciously in their own minds, they think like, no, no, this is what I want the most. This is like the most important thing to me right now. I really want a partner. I'm totally ready. I just need to like, and what they'll learn about themselves during the process is actually all the ways that they keep men out or partners 
Again, I've had women, excuse me, I've had women in the no man diet who are women who date women and, and we work with that. So it's, it's, it is only for women, sorry, dudes. <laughs> um, but whether you date men or whether you date women or whether you date both, it's all welcome in the space. And so, but finding actually all the ways that they keep men or keep partnership actually at bay that they never really get to see when they're in their um, sort of chronic habits of dating and relating and on again, off again in the same relationship over and over because, and I did this too, um, even with my, who's now my current partner, but at the time that I went on the no man diet, I broke up with my then partner and it specifically had to do with, I was like, no, 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 I want to be in a relationship with him and he's the one pushing me away. And through my own process, I saw the ways that I actually limited our relationship, but it was so easy to point to the ways that he did it. His ways were really obvious and my ways were really subtle. And as long as I stayed in that dynamic, I got to keep telling myself the story that it was him or it was the man before that, or it was unavailable men. And it was so obvious because I was the, like, I was the really relational one and I was the one reaching out and I was the one with the good communication skills. And like, so it was very easy to find evidence for the story that it was them. And when I went on my no man diet, what I really got to see were the ways that I kept relationship out and that I limited the depth of our relationship. And then I like preemptively guarded myself because I was sure they were going to leave anyway. And I have seen that also time and time again with the women who come through the no man diet or who I've taken through no man diets in other programs and other ways is like, holy shit moments of getting, Oh, I am guarded here. And that's why this dynamic is even happening. I, it's so easy to point to what he's doing. But actually, I can see now what I'm doing. And that goes back to what I said at the very beginning, which is that often there really is, and again, and this is sort of this piece too, women will be like, but what I want is a relationship. Like, why would I put myself on a no man diet when what I want is a man, right? Or a partner or a relationship. And it often really, really takes the kind of clarity that comes from going like, okay, for this time, I choose not just I'm hoping, hoping, hoping to be in a relationship and I'm just not by accident or, you know, like because of external circumstances. No, I choose this time for me and I choose this time to learn about the dynamics that I'm creating and I choose this time to truly create the kind of loving relationship with all parts of myself that would even invite somebody in who could be with all parts of myself. I, I choose that for this time because it clears the decks. It's like a, it's like a palate cleanser would be one kind of superficial way of talking about it where it's like, okay, I'm going to clear out or um, what do we do in, in experiments, right? You kind of have to like have a control and all the, all the factors that would be like, well, it could have been because of this, or it could have been because of this, or we don't know, like it could have been because of this, or, you know, maybe you're, you're you know, you make a, a dish that has like, 10 billion ingredients and half of them are, you know, well-known allergens. And then people are allergic to something. It's like, well, was it the eggs in the dish or was it the peanuts? Was it the gluten or was it like, we don't know because we weren't sort of particular about it. So the way we create container in the no man diet clears the space to go like, Oh, I can actually see what's happening now in a way that I couldn't before because there were too many um, factors that could be creating this, that, or the other, and like too many if, what, buts, maybes factors to be looking at rather than like, wow, okay, I've cleared all of that out and now I can really see what's happening. One of the other, one of the, the sort of final pieces that I know I wanna put in here, and again, really would love to hear any shares about either how this relates to your life or you're not sure if it relates to your life or how would this work in your life or any questions, um, even just about the no man diet, totally happy to answer in the next five to 10 minutes. Um, so bring them on now. 
But there's this piece also around choice, and it's the choice to be in a relationship and the choice to not be in a relationship. And so I talked about that before, that if we don't have full choice around whether to be in a relationship, it's not a choice. And if we don't have choice to not be in a relationship, it's not a choice. But there's also this piece around, um, at the risk of sounding sort of trite and cliche, it's like, do I actually have a choice to be me in relationship? And most of us, many, many, and again, I'll say many women, I mean, I certainly see this with men as well, but I see this so prevalent with women, is that as soon as we get into this realm of like intimacy and dating and sex, it becomes like, well, what does he want? And like, well, that's, you know, like I'm not changing myself to be with him. I'm just like modulating myself to be with him or, you know, this, just these little adjustments. And suddenly we're like all contorted into a pretzel. We're like, how the fuck did I even get here? I don't even recognize myself. And I want to acknowledge that two things. One is that I believe that this, you know, 99% of the time, this comes from a really beautiful and pure intention. And it's, it's the unconsciousness of it that has us end up, you know, whether it's six months or six years later, and we're like, who am I? <laughs> and how would I even walk myself back to finding out? But it starts with like the purest and most beautiful of intentions. And then, I, you know, of course, I have to acknowledge, like, of course, relationship takes some, I hate the word compromise, um, but it, it, there is generosity in like, oh, you know, you like sushi. I'm not a big fan of sushi, but you know what? I can find something else to eat at the sushi restaurant and I would be happy to go to sushi because you love it. Like it takes this kind of give and take in relationship. Like if you don't want to give to each other, then you probably shouldn't be together. But it's doing that consciously versus like, I think he doesn't like this part of it. I'm pretty sure he only wants to see da, 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 and it's unconscious where we like morph ourselves around and then, and then we, you know, we turn around, we go like, I don't even recognize myself. Um, and he doesn't even know that I don't like sushi. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> so I have two examples. And one is from a very long time ago when, um, gosh, I mean, 15 years, maybe a little bit more, actually somewhere between like 15 and 20 years ago, I was newly out of um, a very long-term relationship that for me to leave was quite dramatic. Um, and, and, and I had just started dating and like for the first time, for the first time since I had moved to the Bay area, I'd lived in a monastery before that. Right. So like it was a whole new world for me. I'd been in a relationship for four and a half years. Uh, it was semi abusive, you know, so I was a little shell shocked from the whole thing. And I was dating, I was dating this guy. I just thought was like super, super hot and he was super smart. And like, I was just super, I was just like kind of head over heels, um, giddy about him. And we had these really great dates and somewhere in the midst of that, I'm like, I don't even know if we were texting because we didn't really text back then <laughs> the way we do now. Maybe it was an email. I don't know. He reached out, but it wasn't like a phone conversation. It was like some sort of written communication. And he was saying like, Hey, you know, so what about such and such a date? Um, let's play Scrabble. And again, you know, I'll play Scrabble, but I don't like Scrabble. Uh, I don't know why, because I actually like reading and word. I mean, I love reading. I love words, but there's something about Scrabble and the way it's set up. I feel stupid. Like I play Scrabble with people. I just feel stupid. I don't like feeling stupid. I definitely didn't want to feel stupid with like, you know, super hot, hotshot lawyer that I was just newly dating in the city. Um, but I caught this part of me that like, or, you know, it was like, I just automatically wanted to be like, sure, I'd love to play Scrabble. And then I was like, who was about to say that? I would not love to play Scrabble. So again, of course, I could always be like, I'm not a huge fan of Scrabble, but we can totally play. Like, that's your favorite game. Let's play. In that moment, I was able to, you know, catch that. And I was able to say, like, I would love to go out. You know, could we play dominoes instead? Such and such, you know, so there's a lot of ways to deal with it. The point really is the consciousness around it. Like what I caught in that moment was how easy it would have been for that to be. It's like 
who fucking cares? Scrabble, dominoes, like I'm out on a date. It's great. But that was like one of those little micro moments at the beginning of a potential relationship where I was going to pretend to be something I'm not, which is like, I would love to play Scrabble. I would not love to play Scrabble. <laughs> um, you know, maybe it's like the Knicks game or something. I would love to go to the Knicks game. It's like, I'll go with you, but I would not love it. Um, and then I, I, I caught myself, it's like a different, you know, layer of it. But again, fairly recently with my, you know, then ex, now current partner, um, that I, there are so many ways that some of them based on, you know, experience and things he'd actually said and real fact and what have you, but I had begun to walk on eggshells in certain ways around him that had to do with like how effusive I am or how, you know, how kind of how affectionate I like to be or um, just certain ways where I was like, I started holding back and being like, well, I'll just wait and see what he does or what he wants. And when I went on my no man diet, I was able to see much more clearly how I was able to kind of look in the rear view mirror and go like, huh, I, I, I don't, first of all, I don't even know that that's necessary with him. Like I was kind of preemptively doing this and also I don't know that I want to be in a relationship with someone that I can't hug in public. And, you know, he never said, please don't hug me in public. Like I just was sort of, you know, modulating myself in these certain ways. And so when I came off my no man diet and he and I did not re-engage in relationship for another, it was a few months and it really, it took some time. He had, anyway, that's a story for another time. Um, but there was time, and so there was kind of this this slower, more incremental meeting of each other and going like, okay, do we really want to do this again? And even at one point, we started, we, we like started having sex again, and then I watched our dynamic almost like it was like it just wanted to pick right back up, and I was like, oh, wait. You know, and we both kind of paused, and we were like, no, not if it's going to be like this. Like, this was not good for either of us. And we were able to kind of step back and then again, re-engage. And there was this really clear choice I made. And I didn't even say it to him. That's where, again, I said at the beginning, it's like the work that we can do in ourselves has the power to change dynamics. It has the power to change literally the field around us and the people we're with. Not like I'm going to change you so you're different, right? No, I'm going to do this work on myself and it is magic. It's magic the way it will literally change other people from the inside out um, when we really turn the focus on our own work. And so I made this real commitment to myself and it wasn't like a fuck you kind of commitment. It was just like, okay, I am committed to being my full self with this man and he will either love that person or he won't. He will either want to be in relationship with that person or he won't. And that doesn't mean, again, that if he says, like, I'm uncomfortable, you know, making out in public, I'd be like, well, that's just who I am. I'd be like, oh, great. Thanks for letting me know. But I wasn't going to preemptively, you know, hold myself back from kind of being like the weird, enthusiastic, affectionate human that I am in all, like, in, just in all kinds of ways. Like, I'm sort of much more, you know, <laughs> Blah, than he is, um, and which frankly is tr mostly true. Like, you know, if I'm talking to the women here, most of you are going to be sort of like more energetic, more effusive, more, you know, like got stuff going on, like than the men in your life. And the point is not to try to resonate with them and become like them. You know, if they're going to choose you, they're going to choose you because of what you bring to their lives not because you're just like them. And so I really made this decision like, oh, I'm going to be me again at the risk of sounding kind of cliche. And because I want someone who wants to be with me. And again, these sound so simple and we're all like, duh, but we don't act like this in relationship. We act like we have to be somebody else. And so again, going on a no man diet, putting oneself in this kind of container 
can often help to highlight all the ways like, oh, no, I knew that that was true in the abstract. And of course, I want to be in relationship with someone who wants to be with me. But I thought maybe I needed to pretend to be someone else until they were with me. And then I could show them who I really was and they'd be in love with me, you know, or, or like we do these kind of weird mental gymnastics around it. And then like, no, I'm just going to like show them who I am, which is different than like, you know, vomiting all of our childhood trauma on them on the first date. It, there's the capacity to just be like, no, I'm going to be the human I am with them. And that doing that with like my now partner totally changed our relationship. And I, I think, you know, I, I mean, I, I watched it actually change him, which I didn't expect. That was totally unexpected. And I think if I had done it with any intention to change him, it wouldn't have worked. So I don't recommend that. But it also changed me. And it changed, um, you know, it's, a lot of this came from being on my no man diet, really being with like, no, actually, I like me. This was another, it wasn't even written as a testimonial, but a woman from the previous snowman diet, one of her like top takeaways, she was basically like, I realized I really like myself and I don't want to be anyone other than me. And I was like, praise God, hallelujah. Like, this is what I really want, you know, for all women and frankly, all humans. Like, I just want you to, you know, please discover that you like yourselves and that you're okay just as you are. <laughs> And that everything that we do is just um, for like fuller fulfillment and expression of that, but not to fix something, not to turn us into fundamentally different people. So my experience of being with myself on the no man diet really strengthened that thing of like, oh no, I like not just that I know in the abstract that it's okay to be me, but I had a lived embodied experience that I like me. And, and that even in the moments I don't like me, like I am me and there's really nothing to be gained for anybody by trying to be someone that I'm not. And, and then doing that relationally when my now partner and I came back together, like in this kind of relational way, was it was like um, it had an alchemical impact on me, on him, and on the, our dynamic. And um, it's, you know, I still see him sometimes look at me like, who is this alien? I somehow led into my life, but I see now there's a way that I can actually see that he's not like um, wishing that he hadn't invited this alien into his life. He's just, he's kind of like in awe of how alien I am. And it's this reminder. It's like, Oh, just because we're different doesn't mean he doesn't want that part of me. So then this brings it back to choice which is like, I actually now have, did I, now it wasn't like, I can't bring all of me. Cause I hear this a lot and you may resonate with it too, is like, I'm too much or, well, I know that they don't want blank part of me. This da da da, da like, like we already know what the other person can and cannot handle. First of all, I would say you probably don't know. You might end up being right. I'm not saying that I know that you're wrong, but I would say for most people, most people have decided that based on very, very, very early childhood programming, not on current experience. Um, and at the very least, I invite you to create new data based on real life experience and not just like one time, right? Like I got mad one time and he didn't like it. So look, I was right. He can't handle my anger. Um, <laughs> Like we have to actually create real data in real time, you know, as adults, because that early childhood programming and wounding is so intense and it's directly connected to the part of us that thinks we're going to die. Because if when we were a child, if our parents removed love, we, we would die. We would die. And 
so it it's a it has a direct line like it's not going through any of the other channels that our regular like thoughts and feelings go through it's just like you know gonna die um and so it really it takes real intention real attention and real work to be with the parts of ourselves that imagine we're going to die if we show these parts to other people and they may or may not reject those parts or us So the no man diet gives you, gives us a container in which to be with all those parts and discover that we actually won't die if we begin to bring them, to be with them, to share them with other people, to reveal them, to express pieces of ourselves that have lain dormant, often for, you know, years, if not decades. So just going to pause here for a moment, um, check the comments, and then also sort of see if there's like one, any last piece that I'm completely forgetting to bring in. But please bring your comments here. Any questions, any shares? Um, The last thing I want to say is that the no man diet is truly, it's like a radical um, crash course, or maybe I'll say, I'll take the word radical and put it here. So the no man diet is a crash course on radical self-trust. So if that's something that you want for yourself, then it is worth exploring whether the no man diet is right for you right now. Um, I will link in the comments. And regardless of if you're a man or a woman, <laughs> whether you join me in the no man diet or not, um, really, I wish for you freedom in relating. And to me, that that's choice. That's choice. It's the freedom, the freedom to love as fully as you love. The freedom to allow yourself to be loved as deeply as you want to be loved and as somebody is longing to love you I guarantee um, so I wish for you all of that and this is simply one access point to do that work within in service of your own choice and freedom to love and be loved Ciao for now.